Hello and welcome to the Music Production Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Funk, and this is the show about all things making music. And today, I'm very happy to welcome back Joseph Holiday. He makes music as Snakes of Russia. Uh, he was on the, on the show on episode 175 in June 2020 during a most peculiar time. And since then, he's been doing so much cool work, making music, doing sound design work, videos, and he's got a new record coming out very appropriately on Friday the 13th, October 13th. And it's really great. It's kind of this end of the world, dystopian synthesis destruction stuff um it's called true surrender i got to listen to it today and i loved it it's you know what's really cool and welcome to the show joseph good to see hey, you again it's great to be back great to be back yeah nice to reconnect absolutely man i, I like like you said it was three years which is mm-hmm. i don't know where those years went but they're they went. well thinking about <laughs> that it was june 2020 it almost mm-hmm. makes sense to hear a very dystopian album from you and yeah, what yeah. i like about your kind of dystopia is you know it's very synth heavy modular synth heavy but it's not also like the sci-fi throwback of the 80s very forward thinking it's very modern you know and i love that yeah. kind of stuff too but it sounds fresh and new and there's just tones and textures that um you know i don't really know that i've heard in too many other places before so uh, it sounds Thanks, incredible man. congratulations that means a lot that means job. a lot it, it, there is a there is a very conscious decision though to make stuff that it, i i don't i don't like I don't, I don't want it to feel retro, you know. Maybe a little bit nostalgic, but not coming from a certain place uh, in time, you know. Um, so that there's a little bit of an effort to do that, you know, to not pinpoint it to like a certain, you know, influenced by a certain decade type of music, you know. It's it's kind of a conscious decision to make it feel like nostalgic enough that you feel like you've heard it before somewhere, but doesn't hark back to um you know the 80s or 90s too specifically yeah it's it's not relying on some of the uh stereotypical sounds or techniques of the time but it's uh, right you know you you've got such great distortion on the oh, oh. It's like the thing that really struck me um upon first listening was just these distortions and tones you're getting are just really cool and they almost sound like they're tearing out of the speakers when you listen. Uh, thanks, man. I mean, yeah, I, I lean really heavily on um, saturation, actually, like, um, you know, soft clipping and, and tape saturation and driving tape hard and driving compressors hard and stuff. But, yeah, I realize it's it's a kind of a really big part of what I'm doing is is, is the distortion or, you know, the, the saturation and, and that whole element of it because we can get it from a few different places. I mean, I, I, you know, this, this time around, I experimented with, um, doing a lot of reamping of my synths through, um, Mm. guitar amps and and speakers and stuff. And I mean, you, you know, capturing the room. So that adds a lot there too. And then, um, just different distortion techniques. I've, I've gotten a lot of new gear since, since my last set of recordings so yeah i just got to kind of flex with all that on on this recording definitely but i i I love saturation in just as a to impart its character on the recording as just like a piece of the recording really you know yeah i'm the same way i I like things a little dirty and messy even if it's a really you know uh, if it's not an aggressive sound just right find like character and gives it that's it that's the magic word it gives it such character that you know yeah that's that's exactly what i love about it too which is the character you know i mean i i i'm i never want to make music that just sounds perfect you know i I love all the um the uh you know the slight flaws and imperfections in music and the wabi-sabi i think that's the term the japanese term Mm -hmm. um I love that. That's that's the the, the music I want to make and, and the productions I want to make. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that comes across. That's that's really great. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I love that concept too. The kind of just letting things be as they are, not trying to polish away mm-hmm. any imperfections and yeah. keep it pure. Yeah. Which exactly. I think is a challenge when you're doing electronic music, synthesized and um, sequenced stuff. You know. Yeah. To, 
I to mean, keep like feel and a human and element control. to it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, there's a lot of things I do to to retain that, you know, and um, like moving stuff around a grid and sometimes not putting stuff on the grid or or you know detuning synths and um, other things and you know string parts and. A lot of stuff, and it's all intentional. It's all intentional to to make it not sit perfectly. Um, you know, there, there there's so much great music in the world that is just absolutely flawless, and <laughs> is you know. So I'm not trying to make that. I'm trying to make something that just has has a bit of character to it, and and um, you know. But but there's a lot of, of of things and techniques that I that I do that that kind of you know, kind of try to reinforce that human element, you know, and a, a lot of it is just, is just really, you know, playing stuff into Ableton live, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and like, again, I, I, this time I, I experiment a lot with, um, synths in a room, you know, what would this sound like if it were, if it were mic from across the room and, um, and overdriven and, and speakers pushing air and, and, and stuff. So it, a, a lot of that just is going to create that imperfection, and that's that's really what what I was going for. Hmm. Nice. So, do you mind just taking us through a little bit about how you go about making like a Snakes of Russia track? Is it? Yeah, because you know, you're, you're not I, you're not dollless, but I know you rely heavily on like hardware and modular stuff. Yeah. So there's a there's a there's a great deal of hardware in my process and but it's usually all the same thing where i'll i'll spend the morning walking and kind of maybe listening to music or or listening to an audiobook and and, and like really clear the palette then i'll come in here and i'll just i'll i'll just open up ableton and kind of just just get some ideas going you know just the same as the last time we talked just the daily the daily exercise of just make of making stuff of doing the thing you know just putting in the work and just and just but to me it's exciting like i love it like i'm never i i, I still thankfully i'm never short of ideas like there's always like an idea or maybe i heard a, a, a song on the way in that that really inspires me to go a certain route but yeah i'll just fire it up and just get an idea out whether that be a riff a bass line a drum beat and then i'll kind of like um build that out a little bit and then maybe I'll, I'll turn on, you know, a hardware synth and I'll do some quick sound design and just get it in and get it and, and, re and record it as fast as possible. Um, that's one thing that I really like to do. I get, I get stuff committed. I don't like, um, I don't like having stuff that exists as MIDI and as, you know, as, just I like to get stuff bounced quickly to audio. A lot of a lot of that is because I use so much um, hardware that you you know I have a piece of hardware card called the Overstayer Modular Channel, which is incredible. It's right in front of me. It's like my favorite thing in this room. And obviously, I can only use it on one stereo source at the same time. So I have I have to bounce stuff constantly in the sound design process. But you know, even like um, bringing stuff through tape or or using the OB6 or the or the Model D, it's just like. I need to commit those things. So even with even with software based synths, I I tend to commit stuff really fast and get it and get it down and and audio, and you know there's a few reasons for that. It's one is is just a lot of it's hardware and I need to you know some some modular and that's only you know it's very temporary. So I like to get it in as audio as quickly as possible. And the other reason was I mean I just upgraded my system not that long ago, less than a year ago, before then I was on a, um, an older computer and I, I had to commit stuff because I was, I had so many instances of certain plugins running, um, a lot of contact stuff. And it was just like demolishing my CPU. So I, so it was kind of a practice in, um, <laughs> in just kind of out of necessity. Like I needed to, if I wanted to not, you know, be lagging. So, I remember when a buddy of mine he he upgraded to the Mac Studio, which is what I ended up using, and and you know he, he would just like flex and say, "Yeah, I can have eighty four tracks of of uh, Melodyne open," and you know, and I'm like, "I don't I don't know why I would want that many open," you know, but it's just it's just it's kind of it kind of comes from like, you know, when you first you know when you first are are coming up, you you kind of like 
it's all about your limitations. So I, mm. I think that it could still be all about our limitations. So I, I even now having the processing power and the Mac Studio, I still I still bounce stuff and commit stuff and f- freeze stuff and I'm always like conscious of my processing power, um, conserve resources, you know, and that could be a metaphor for you know our our creative life too. Conserve your resources, yeah. like you just right. get in here, do the thing, and and really focus and. But anyway, I'm going off on tangent here. But uh, um, that that's the process. I just come in here and work on getting the ideas out as soon as I can and, and printing them. And then um, I what I did this time around for this record is is I, is I came in for I, I mean I was I was sketching for a long time and but when I when I made a, a conscious effort to like okay I got to start getting these songs together and start putting them into you know um a record a, a cohesive batch of songs I gave myself like a month of um just every day I would just start with something brand new and when I you know at the end of my day I would save it and, and archive it but then I'd come in the next day fresh just something completely brand new so I wouldn't be revisiting stuff and then at the at the end of the month you know I had I had um a really good batch of stuff and combined with th- combined those recordings with the you know recordings over a year of just these ideas and you know, to stress, they're just ideas, they're just riffs or, or sound design bits or just a beat or, or a, a verse and a chorus. So then to take those and then kind of start refining them, you know, and, and, and getting, starting off with, I don't know, 50 and then, and then, and then listening and going on walks and kind of deciding, okay, this is cool. This is cool. Let me work on this. And then just refining them more. And then, and then, um, and then making, starting to get a structure together. And and then eventually just just starting stacking layers and 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 more sound design, and getting really surgical with with the edits is probably like the last little step. And then ultimately mixing and then and then mastering. I mean, I, I for the record, for for this record, I did things a little bit differently. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but I did things a little differently in terms of the production process. I, you know, we can certainly explore that if you want. Yeah. Let me pick apart a few of those things you said. Yeah. A lot of great points I think you made and mm-hmm. a lot of interesting workflows. Yeah. Um, when you first start before sketching things out, uh, are you using like certain soft synths or something just to get melodies and ideas and riffs together before you're yeah. sending them to your hardware? Yeah. Um, it's, it depends. Sometimes, um, Sometimes that those ideas would be hardware specific, you know. I, 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 I probably the newest synth in this room is probably the OB six. So there was a there was like a good a good couple of weeks where I just that was always on, and I and I had made a, a bunch of my own um, presets, and that that was just what I what I reached for for that, you know, like that yeah. was that was the thing. But usually, I have if if it's like super fast, the first thing it's usually serum. You know, I just I just kind of pull it up really fast and go for it. Um, there was there was kind of an idea to make this record um, when I th- when I when it was developing that I I wanted a certain type of sound. You know, that kind of cut like a guitar. So the OB six was really was really helpful in that as as a polysynth to to help me kind of achieve that so i made about four or five different patches that would always be my starting point for the day when i was trying to write those kind of songs and that was pretty like pretty deep into like the concentrating writing process for the record but yeah i i i went and i designed a few of these really cool patches and and that was my jumping off point but if it's just an idea um it's usually you know I'll just grab serum you know just grab a base and serum just mm-hmm. to get something out or it it could be very uh, specific to you know maybe the night before I was I got a new sample library or a plugin and I just kind of um, you know starred um, or I wish I wish I wish contact had a had a better way of making favorites you know like uh, of your favorite yeah. presets so my way around that is actually like I I'll make it uh, within a, an instrument rack. 
So like if there's a if there's like a contact instrument that I really dig, but it's kind of deep within a library, I'll I'll save that as an instrument rack and then name that. So it's kind of like my own way of making my favorite presets. So as an aside, like I did that for this record. I made like a palette, you know, of those instrument rack as my favorite presets. So yeah, so it's mm-hmm. usually was from that or we talked about in the, in our last podcast about having a folder of stuff that to jump off from. So those techniques have not changed. That's still the way that I like to approach it. You know, there's there's always mm-hmm. usually an idea or like a spark or something. It's never I'm never sitting down and be like, you know, like pulling something out of thin air it's usually kind of like a riff or a sound or something i heard or another track or i'm like that's such a cool idea let let me explore something like that there's always you know i'm only the the sum of all my influences really um so Mm. it's it's kind of like just listening to and consuming you know uh so much music and film too and, and books and stuff and you know just it's always the inspiration is always there so it's just kind of following that through a little bit right yeah i love that approach the kind of just having some stuff because it sounded like you were really separating a bit from the writing from the sound design a little so by having that palette i guess you you can do that you can just jump to your sounds and yeah i mean writing yeah i i did it's always there's always such like um it's always such a there's never like a clearly defined like this is the writing stage and this is the sound design stage. There is there is I will say about my about how I work. There's definitely a mixing stage. Like there's definitely a stage where even though I'm kind of mixing as I go along, I do like to kind of um, take when I'm finished and I feel like I can start mixing this thing. I do like to take a week off and not listen to a single note of it. And then kind of go in back into everything muted and, you know, I won't zero everything out. Like, I'll just keep the work that I have, but I'll, I'll listen to everything. I'll mute everything and I'll bring everything up channel by channel. So the mixing process is its own thing. But the sound design and the writing are so intertwined. But with this record in particular, I definitely did a few, like, phases of sound design. Like, there was... um. There was those initial initial patches and then, you know, sometimes writing inspires a patch. And then yeah. there was the whole process of me going to another studio and and recording some stuff there and, and, and then coming back and putting that together. So it was a very like a multi-level, you know, situation this time around. But mm. but, yeah, those are never completely um, separate from one another. They're always intertwined. Right. Yeah, and I think your your idea of like taking the walk, listening to some music, just getting oh. some fresh air, getting mm-hmm. the blood flowing. Yeah, you know, getting. Um, I mean, it sometimes it might sound funny, but a lot of times I'm doing like exercise. It right right over here in this little floor, yeah. just before I start, just because I feel like I just work better when I'm moving and when I got yeah. some some blood flow going. Ideas. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I, I've had a I've had a uh, a child since we talked last, so I had a congratulations. I had a, thank thank you. My son is now um, he'll he'll be two in a few weeks. So wow. it's incredible how much that changed my day for the best. Um, and I look back and I actually work less but get way more done. And it's mm-hmm. it's the time is hyper focused. It's just this is my that's my time with him. This this is my time to work and. And this is, you know, that's my time to be back with him before he goes to sleep. And it's just, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a testament to um, just making, you know, like the time spent away from making the music is just as important as the time spent making the music, I feel, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> years and years, I did not subscribe to that at all. Like I would just, yeah. you know, I mean, even three years ago, really. I mean, when we when we talked last, um, you know, but there's, there's really something about like, now I know what the end of my day is. Like, I'm just like, yep, yeah, that's right. cool. Like I, I did this, I did that and, and, and then it's like just like I kind of put it to bed and then wake up the next day and listen on the walk and, and you know, that and then decide, yeah, that's cool. Let me let me go. And, you know, if I'm in the mixing stage, it's like, let me let me tweak these things and stuff. Um, 
and it's also just you know just getting out there and living a little bit you know it's 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 yeah. uh we're all we're all, all of our studio tans are, are really dark um but no it's it's um yeah it's just, it changed my life for the best and and it's it's i mean i think i was focused before but this is like a whole another level of like you know this is all the time i'm going to get today so i better i better use it really wisely you know and it's it's helped helped tremendously I go through the same thing when I'm uh, going back to work after summer vacation. Summer vacation, there's endless time. You feel like you can always put it off or you can either never stop. And it's when I go back to work that I get so much more discipline because yeah. like you said, there's only so much time and it ends at a certain time because you, you have to go to bed. You have to be in a physical place from certain hours. And it, yeah. it, it focuses me quite a lot. Yeah. That's the word. That's the word discipline. It's just, it's mm. the discipline. It's the same discipline as coming in here and doing it every day just to, just to work the muscle, you know, it's just like, just, just do, just do the work, you know? Um, but yeah, I love that. I love that. I mean, I, I, I try to teach, you know, um, everyone in my household, I try, I use that word a lot, discipline. It's, it's just kind of, mm -hmm. it's just the way, you know, it kind of gets us, to finish things and and to you know to to get stuff out into the world otherwise you know uh you know if if you're making music just for yourself to listen to in in and that's not in your master plan that's awesome too but I, I still think there's a level of discipline in there to you know so the 30 day thing that you do is very similar to the january thing right where we make a little bit of music every single day and yeah it's the same exact thing. Like you're, you're so pressed for time because you're coming up with new things every day. You're trying to show up every day. You don't have time to go back and listen and evaluate and look at how far you've come. You just got to keep going. And by the end of that, you just have so many ideas to choose yeah. from. And even if you get just a couple good ones out of that, you're you're so far ahead of where you were if you didn't do it. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, just <laughs> oh, love that treat, approach. treat every day like January. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> obviously, tough, there's going to, you know, I'm, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know. Um, but that's a phase I see, like you have, like you go through a right, 30 day right. situation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, there's, there's months and there's, and there's like, um, I, I've had a busy year with, you know, the, with music and f that, that, that I make, um, for my day job and, and sound design and, and stuff like that. So, you know, there, there, there's stretches of, of, you know, a few weeks where I, I, I don't get to make any, um, you know, snakes music and that's fine. You know, it's, it's almost like I, I welcome that when, when I, when I had mastered this record, I, I said that I wasn't going to make, I was going to not make any of, of music for this project for um, just an undetermined amount of time, you know? So obviously, you know, but when I enter that mode and I, and I go and like, yeah, I want I really want to start writing and I'm, and I'm absolutely, it's like the time is like soon because I'm absolutely getting an itch of, of, you know, then I'll just go and transition to that of like, all right, that's how my days start, you know? Cause that, that to me then becomes the most important thing in my day is writing and, and getting ideas out, you know, um, over the last couple of months, you know, that there was, there was another gig that was the most important part of my day. So, um, I think it's also great to have balance in that regard, you know. Um, and and I was yeah, I had just finished this this, you know, twelve song record and <laughs> everything that came along with that. So I, I I needed to kind of turn that part of my brain off for a little bit and not work on um, any music that was my own, you know. But there was tons of other things that that it falls under this umbrella that I was able to work on, fortunately, which was cool, you know, like sound design projects and stuff, you know. Right. And then when you return to the snake stuff, you're going to be excited about it. You're yeah, exactly. Man. That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. And it's like, and I think I, I also like to sp spend that time just kind of like um, harvesting ideas, you know, and, and um, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, again, I'll repeat that, that, you know, on the sum of my influences. So it's just like, it's just as important as it is to me to make music, it's important me to like just be out there consuming stuff and 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 you know be inspired by things you know 
and uh, yeah, the fertilizer. And, the yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, yeah, yeah. And that's 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 basically basically the thing. I mean, I mean, I I have a like. It's also also I've been playing a lot of live shows recently, and and that brings a whole nother level to. It, it informs my writing in a different way because I because I want to make mm. stuff that will translate and hit harder live, and so I welcome that. Like I welcome that as as this new phase of let's just say like as I'm starting the next project or the next record or the next EP, I'm like what that will be, and I will be sh- I'm sure to be influenced by the live show and the performance aspect of it, you know. Um, so that's another thing too. It's like letting that, letting that kind of inform where the writing goes, you know. And um, hmm. I was doing, I was doing, you know, some film music at the at last year around this time, which informed this record. And and you know, so it's kind of just letting letting myself be open to where it's going to go, and and also letting myself be open to where it might go. And and you, you know, there, there's. It's really funny. I, 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 I talk a lot about deadlines and I think they're incredibly important, but it's just nuts sometimes. Like there was a few songs on this record where like I, I, ha- I had my deadline, um, you know, for, for every, for e- each step of the way, there was a deadline I, um, uh, to, to go to take these tracks somewhere else to, to work on and then, and then a mastering deadline. And like, I remember before both of those deadlines, like within the week of that, I just, I, I wound up writing new tracks. And, and they were like, they're, they're like, it's like, they're two of my favorite tracks on the whole record. And it's, it's so weird how that happens where you're just like, I've been working on these songs for like (laughs) so long. And then all of a sudden, and then in the 11th hour, I'll just, I'll write these two that just fit so well. So I never knew that was going to, I couldn't call that in the beginning of the process, you know? So it's just, it's just weird. So I think, I think letting yourself be open to, swaying a certain way and 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 you know just in, enjoying the process and kind of you know um be be you know disciplined and rigid to yourself and and hit your deadlines but but you know be open to having things kind of ebb and flow mm. it's like a reasonable discipline you've got going on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean crazy yeah, because strict, it, it is but... you know we're we're talking about creativity here it's like we're not talking about me doing 300 push-ups you know yeah. so it's kind of like um you know th- it just by the nature of it i think there needs to be some flexibility within mm. you know within boundaries like I, I i love to have boundaries you know with 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 creative stuff because it does keep you in a um keep it, it keeps things focused you know it's just like sure i can add this track mastering is still tuesday <laughs> you know so i, I just you know um just gotta kind of hustle a little bit and, and then but it's amazing how how great some work could be if you only give yourself that amount of time you know i mean i think we've all heard that yeah. expression that if if you if you're given four hours to do something that takes eight it'll be better and there's some kind of truth to that, you know. You don't you don't flounder. You don't you don't second guess yourself. You just finish and you do it. And then at the end of the day, if if, if it's something you don't want to put out, you don't have to. So it's it's kind of you know. But I, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's like you know we should all. I guess it's like January, right? I mean, you have you know here's the day to make something and put it up and post it. Um, so yeah, a lot of different ways we yeah, can that's- approach it. Yeah, it's like you don't have the time to be judgmental and right. you're you know um when you know you're going to master and in two days you don't have all the time to speak to what you're speak talking about with like keeping it organic and human and mm-hmm. lifelike not over polishing it you don't have time to do that <laughs> so you just focus on the things that you need to do to get it done I know I get lost a lot of times when sometimes when it's like time to make decisions on tracks, I start yeah. doing things like EQing little parts for an hour <laughs> to avoid it. But when yeah. you're in those situations, there's just no time for that. It's just, we have to keep pushing this thing forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the truth. I mean, finished is better than perfect. You know, it's just, Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's about getting things done and in that in that 
11th hour and that and making i mean don't get me wrong like the last couple days before a mastering deadline like it's the most intense i'm working on a project like i make a lot of really small changes and um you know there there's a lot of back and forth and listening in the car and listening in headphones and listening out in the living room and so you know the work is is being is definitely being there's a lot of work being compacted into that into that small amount of time but i think mm-hmm. if i didn't have that endpoint i would i would do for, we forever be opening the um you know be opening ableton and just being like oh, i think let me just cut a little bit of more 5k out you know like we would do that all the time you know um i was talking to a friend recently and I, and I and I realized something that I do that 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 is, it might be a good idea. I think um, he was talking about when he listens to mixes and um, he does it in the in the DAW and in the studio, and then he's just tweaking kind of infinitely. Whereas mm-hmm. for a while I've been um, I just kind of bounce it and I do all my listening to that mix like not sitting in front of the. DIW so and it's critical listening like I'll take notes and then I'll come back the next morning with fresh ears and so it's a very like finite set of notes and because we we all know that that if we're sitting and we're just constantly tweaking like you know it might be like we might hit the point of diminishing returns so I I I, mm-hmm. I like to minimize th- that Pro- that part of the process to you know a very drawn out um, thing of of uh, I bounce it I listen in the morning come back with notes fix those notes bounce it again maybe don't listen to the next morning like it's just that perspective is everything to me and again it's not mm-hmm. for everybody but for me that's the way I like to work instead of like it's just having that space in between of of my um my revisions and stuff like that. It, it does wonders. And then, and then of course that last day, you know, before mastering, it's like, I'm, I'm, you know, compacted that into three hours as I, as I listen back and forth and, and, and go in the car and back and, and, you know, so it's just, it just depends on part of the process. I mean, I guess. Mm. I like to do that too. I, I love bouncing it and listening to it when I can't work on it because when you can work on it, you can always just, you kind of like do That's it. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The big picture. Yeah. 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 You, you're kind of getting too far into the details sometimes and you need to step back and just hear it for what it is uh, as a whole. And, yeah. Uh, having the notes is great. Um, and, the, and again, the perspective, um, like our ears, obviously, you know, we get used to things and yeah. you're cutting that 5K, but it's only because like you've gotten so used to it mm. that you have no perspective on what it should really sound like. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hmm. So you said it was a bit of a different process. You you were in another studio too, um, and I read a little bit about that in the uh, press release. Um, and that sounds like it was a big part of the sound of the record. Yeah, I I had started writing these songs, and and it was kind of taking this shape, and I I wanted to do something different, and. Um, I, I, it was taking a, a darker, slower, um, just like shape in the style of music. It was, it was, be, it was becoming just very like, very much like a band would be, you know, like, like it, it, it felt to me, you know, like, like, you know, these, these songs were, were, were um, you know, like kind of like, what would this sound like if it was interpreted by a band? And then, and then by, by thinking about it that way, I thought about what would this, how, how live can I make this? And how, how in the room can I make, you know, these sounds and, and this, and the sound pal that I have. So there's a, there's a producer, um, named Kurt Ballou, who plays in a band called Converge, and he records, um, he's made so many incredible records, and I love how they sound. They sound incredible. They sound, they're, they're heavy, and, but they're, they're, they're beautiful sounding records. And, um, and I just had this wild idea 
one day where I was like, I, 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 I want to hit him up and see if I could go to his studio and just like reamp my synth parts through uh, cabinets and um, and loudspeakers because he has this incredible sounding room. And um, so I, I literally cold emailed him and I and I said, um, I said, hey, uh, uh, you know, this is kind of uh, the music I make. It's not really, you know, along the lines of what you usually work on. But but I have this idea to, to you know, to make some um, recordings and, um, you know, bounce some stuff um off the walls of your room <laughs> and he and he was uh he's like sounds like fun let's do it so we we scheduled it and you know his studio is in salem massachusetts so i i i, I went out there for a couple of days and 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 we did just that we played um all my all my um all these ob6 parts that i had written we played them through um guitar amps mic them um, close mic from across the room. Um, and then we, we, all my mono synth bass parts, we played through a bass cabinet and again, like room mics and stuff. And, and I, I, I just, I wanted his sensibilities on the record. Like I said to him, I'm like, I, I to pretend these aren't synths, like pretend these are guitars, like, like mic this as you would, you know, um, a metal band in here that, that, you know, that you're making a record with and that's what we did and and it was it was it was di very different than you know than obviously miking um guitars all day but but the results what i was hearing in the in the room like it was great it was exactly what i had imagined and then and then my drum stems you know we played those through these giant PA speakers in his room and got a close mic and a, and a, and a far mic. I made some impulse responses and then ultimately we, we, um, and, and I got some dr live drum stuff as well, um, to make samples with and some loops and, and, um, and a little bit of performance stuff. And then we took all that and dumped it to tape. And then I went back with all that. So I had these, just all these additional layers of, the structure of the song that I had, I have all these additional layers now of, of, of these, you know, um, synth chords through these guitar amps and it sounded massive. So then the next couple months were just, just all about me kind of like carving out the parts and like, you know, there's certain parts of the verse where it'll just cut to the room mic and this and that. So that was a lot of fun. And that's where, um, a lot of the, the really, a really intense sound design kind of came in at that point where it was like, um, you know, and more in the terms of, it was almost like, like mixing those parts together and committing them. And then, um, hmm. and then once that part was finished, then, you know, ha taking a little bit of time off and then having a, having my mixing stage. But yeah, that was, that was the, the main thing that I did this time around. Um, and it, it made such a huge difference. It's, it's, um, I can hear it. I can hear that it makes a huge difference to me. Um, you know, when I when I go and I listen to what I you know what I brought to Salem and then what I came back with, it's just it's it's incredible. But again, it's it was just an inspiring process. It's just you know to to mm -hmm. to, to have someone who's worked on some of your favorite records um, playing your your synth stems <laughs> in their studio through Marshall yeah. cabinets mm -hmm. and and it's it's sounding like guitars and and it's just wild man it was it was so much fun and it was cool and Salem's a trip and um and then yeah and I got back and I and I and I finished it and and brought it up to my longtime mastering engineer Justin Weiss who's up in San Francisco and um hit some more tape and um yeah, and, and I always tell him, I always say, um, you know, there's a, a lot of times mastering is very transparent and and a lot of times that's what people want. And that's not what I want at all. Like I want mm -hmm. <laughs> I want him to impart his his um, his vibe on it, you know, as you know, I've let go now and give it to him and he puts a little bit more you know, juju on it and fuzz and whatever saturation and and it's great. And then, yeah. And then I, I come home and I, <laughs> I don't want to hear it for like three months. Um, but no, I, I'm very proud of it. And, um, but, uh, yeah. And that, that was it, man. That was the process. It took, it took a while between, between, you know, the writing and then, and then once, um, you know, I started 
really, really working on it. And then the time in Salem and then, you know, coming back. It, it, it took a while, but uh, I had some breaks in between. But, but yeah, man, it was it was quite the experience. And, and, and I'll say that, like, I'm pretty sure that every record I make from this point forward, I'll probably want to, like, have some stage of it that is a brand new process for me to experience or experiment right. with like maybe i mean who knows it could be it could be sent through amps again but you know may, maybe it's something completely different you know the next time around but it just adds so much to the process to me and i i still believe in records i still believe in you know putting a record on and and listening to it as a whole as a piece as a piece mm -hmm. of 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 art so you know Call me old fashioned, but <laughs> no, no, me. that's that's fun. I mean, that's it's mm -hmm. you're creating a whole thing, right? So yeah. it's like not just a story. These little things; it's the collective. Yeah, yeah, and it's cool. I mean, you, just so people know, you're in like L.A., right? Yeah, maybe Pasadena, yeah. L.A., right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're probably what time of the year did you go to Salem? It was it was like almost like a year was, ago. So it was it was it was Labor okay. Day. A, so it was two weeks ago this okay. week. So a nice time to go. It was great yeah. time, man. But Salem man. is so well known for people go there all the time in the fall, like Halloween stuff, yeah. Salem witch trials. It, yeah, and I man. think that's yeah. a cool little element. You know, the album art you have, you got these like three kind of death-looking creatures, yeah. skeletons yeah. with, uh, in you know black hood is like death would have yeah. so the salem factor is kind of yeah fun man i mean i mean i won't throw like that 100 percent factored into it you know and inspired it because it's like it's it's um in a trip you know, yeah yeah i mean you're surrounded by that Taking there. Journey, it's such a great pilgrimage. yeah it's such a great city <laughs> i had been there years ago but i hadn't been in, in probably about mm -hmm. about 10 or 15 years and um it's just it's just such a, a vibey city man there's so much there's so much culture you know um and definitely that's that seeped in you know as i especially you know in terms of like um just the overall vibe and, and with instrumental music it's 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 really hard to to kind of like tell a story sometimes and convey an, an arc through a series of songs on a record but i think you know having mm -hmm. a little bit of a vibe <laughs> to to kind of yeah be your narrative helps yeah it was cool i brought i brought my um I, uh, sarah my partner and, and my boy with me too and, and they had a great time too so we all loved it it was killer yeah super cool so there's that added like uh memory you have and experience yeah. and i always 100%. feel like that stuff you know might not be on the record but i think it makes a difference i i really do and, yeah. and if no if to no one else to you and even to me now like hearing that you know when yeah. i listen to this again i'm gonna have that in mind and yeah it, it it adds a life that's hard to put your finger on it's hard to like pick it out in the sound maybe but yeah i think it, well, I, it I, has I, an element yeah, I mean, I like to put stuff in there. There's a song on on there where where the the sub is hitting the PA speaker so hard that actually the speaker's vibrating, um, and you can uh -huh. hear it. Like I, I like I had to, you know like I had to put that in there because it's it's you know yeah it's just now it's part like the room is now an instrument you know and it's such an incredible he's got he has such an incredible sounding room. Um, yeah, and then getting the impulse responses too, and coming back. Yeah, I was and, ask you, yeah, yeah. If I so if I added stuff, um, I just ran those through those impulse responses, and um, you know, it was great. It felt what was your process? Awesome what, what reverb you use? Maybe just if anyone not sure what impulse responses are, you know. So um, so basically, we did a, um, a twenty to twenty sweep in the room from a sine wave. Oh, you and did then a sweep. Got, cool. Yeah, I was yeah, doing like so, a hand clap or something. Right. Right, nice. which I had done always before. So I had, um, I so we so we now had uh, the sweep, and I got back and um, I, Max or Ableton has a great device to actually like make the sweep and create the impulse, but it does it didn't have a way for me to take this, the and deconvolve it. So I actually had to like. Um, 
it was like there were there was a few like pieces of software that did what I needed to do what I needed to do but I I didn't I didn't have any of them I think um there's one um fuzz something fuzz measure I think does it um mm-hmm. long story short I have a friend that um is PC based that has a uh it was a Voxango I think that's how you pronounce it program that had a deconvolver in it so he deconvolved it for me made the impulse response and then I and then I I just use it in um in the Ableton uh, hybrid reverb. So it's just in there up all the way on hundred percent. So it's like you're in the room. Um, killer. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really. But yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It's just such a subtle thing, but it really glues this, you know, really, really ties the room together. No, really, really, um, really helps um, all the, all the elements kind of like exist in that space. And that's kind of what I was going for, you know, but then having, having stuff that's just so direct, you know, like having, you know, having this, this bass part that's through an amp that literally sounds like a bass guitar, but then having, you know, a monosynth that's just direct through a preamp and having that juxtaposition between those two sounds is super cool. Mm. And, you know, it, it was such a great experience to have all those layers and, and to experiment with, with bringing them in and out and, and stacking them and not stacking them and, and stuff. And I, I, I made some killer loops there too, some killer um, killer drum loops and stuff because um, just brought stuff home and just squashed the room mics and it sounds massive. And then I layered all those under nice. the recordings too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was great. Awesome you know, experience. there were a lot of times I thought I was hearing guitar, you know, in the right, record. Yeah. Like there was some synth that sounded kind of like big guitar chords. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, I it's it, that that will be six. Did it. Yeah. yeah, that's how there'll be six. But yeah. it was more. I realized six, six voices. <laughs> but yeah, no, actually, it was usually only just a triad. But I realized, I I I really it wasn't about it was about where it was about how totally about how I voiced the chords because because if you mm-hmm. you know I, I made the chords really wide so um, so if, if I if I made them tight it didn't sound you know it didn't sound as much like a guitar as if I did like you know an octave and and, and a fifth you know and sometimes like put the fifth, fifth below the root and, yeah exactly almost exactly like a, like a power chord would be like I was trying to emulate that mm-hmm. and s- really spread them out like move the lowest note down an octave and then that's when it really started to to really kind of sound like um, you know like a guitar would and 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 really messing with the the sustain because um, y- y- you know uh, having the sustain and the release like that took a little bit of trial and error, and and I actually had a few a few different versions like one I had a re- really high sustain version a really low sustain version and I actually ran them both through the amps, um, so that was another interesting detail. But for the most part, yeah, man, it was just. Just the OB6, I, I used the uh, SH-101 for like some harmony stuff, like single note stuff. Um, that was cool. Um, I used a lot of the Model D um, for that too. And then there was a lot of like my ARP stuff. Um, you know, if I played if I played like an ARP or a sequence, um, I, I ran that through the room mics. So a lot of, and then a lot of the points in the record is just the room mics, you know? So... It's, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I, I tell everybody, I'm just like, you don't need this, uh, you know, awesome, <laughs> like huge studio to do this. Like, just do it in your room. It's incredible. Like, so, like a lo- almost all the kick sounds from this record, there's one layer that's just me holding up my iPhone, um, to my speakers and getting the kick and then throwing that nice. into Ableton and EQing it. Because it's super low, um, it, it's it's really, it, but it adds just this gnarly low frequency. But yeah, that little trick is like in almost every single one of the tracks. It just adds this bit of low end. Just you know, as long as you do some surgical EQ and clean it up a little bit, it's great. But yeah, that's that, and that's something anyone can do in their room. You know, just just experiment yeah. with just you, you know getting getting the sense to push some air and stuff and and they'll have just a little bit more character i think yeah yeah the air right i think that's such yeah. a huge part of it like just coming out of the air 
you know, because that's yeah. what sound is. It's yeah. in the air, you know, and when you mm -hmm. synthesize it, it, it doesn't ever, if you don't put it through, it doesn't ever hit that. Right. And just yeah. when it comes out of the speaker and moves the microphone and, yeah. you know, the diaphragm gets a little blow of low end there. Yeah, uh, that's it, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that's such a cool trick to do the the speaker. I've I've done it with a micro cassette recorder. Oh, that's and cool. That's super cool. Like a, it's a hideous sound, but it sometimes but you layer it it's in just there, like sometimes. You yeah, layer it or you time stretch it, you sample it. Um, you get just it adds this like life to your yeah. songs. It's yeah, hard to it's get just, any other way. Exactly. You know, it's just like a lot of production and sound design to me are just the layers and just having one that's just this interesting thing that maybe you only hear it on the sides or maybe you only hear it you only hear the highs mm. just having some little thing i don't know just try it if it doesn't work you can always delete it you know yeah well the record has a lot of space as in like there's four ground elements like some of the synths are so in your face they, like i said they sound like they're tearing your speakers apart and then there's other stuff that's sort of like floating out there in the distance. And it's not buried though. It's very easy to hear and it's in yeah. the mix clearly, but it creates this three dimensional feeling. And I can really, you know, upon thinking about it now, and I'm going to have to listen again after talking to you, um, that reamping on some things. And like you said, combining it with stuff that's a little more direct as well yeah. really yeah. sets these different kind of stages in your depth yeah you know, yeah ground, mid ground background type stuff exactly i mean i think even within the the three different parts of our mix right so we have the we have you know drum stuff then we have low end stuff and and then you know or four parts we have the mid mid range you know really atmospheric stuff and then we have all our leads that take the place of a vocal um i think within that Within even those parts, we can have dimension within those parts, you know, we could we could have one of the leads be um, super direct and in your face. And then the same thing, the same patch, which is played through a PA speaker, mic from across the room. It just adds such an, an extra layer. Maybe you don't even feel that extra layer of the of the room, but but or I, I'm sorry, maybe you don't even hear it, but you feel it. You know, it's there. It's just kind of a, you know, just a little bit on top, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, and you said before um, a lot of these things are subtle, but yeah. when you start adding a lot of subtle things together, it, the effect is pretty dramatic. You know, you, those th those things add up, and sometimes if you make it too extreme, you do it a couple times, and you you almost can't even tell anything happened because they they all kind of command too much attention from you. You you kind of miss. It's like five people screaming at you compared to like. <laughs> different volume levels i guess you know what i'm saying um, yeah it, i love that you told your mastering engineer to to not make it transparent um no, uh, no, my he, band we, we brought our record for uh -huh. mastering and we want it on tape and we're like we want it to have that you know when yeah, we're not sure. trying to put it to tape so it doesn't sound like it was put to tape <laughs> right? right yeah yeah you want to get the effect yeah, I mean, he actually uh, loves that. Like we we had a whole conversation about 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 it because, um, you know, I mean, at this point, I mean, he's been my mastering engineer for like over ten years at this point. But but he's done every single, hmm. almost every Snake song, and um, he's he's just he that's that's part of the reason we love working together because he knows I want that, you know, and and I'm, I'm just like I'm like whatever whatever you think is safe, just go one click above that, and then and then that's probably what I'll love. <laughs> You know, and 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 I'm usually uh, yeah. I usually just send the stuff to him. So actually, to be there actually this time, I was actually in the room and listening oh, cool. in his system, and it was it was it was super cool. It was super cool to be there. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it, it's great. I don't like subtle, man. I don't I, I don't you know. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of gear that's 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 too subtle, you know? And, um, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Like we all need that for certain, like surgical EQs, right? Um, you know, pro three, mm -hmm. um, great surgical EQ, mm -hmm. but, but really what we want, you know, I want something that's just going to impart its character on whatever I, I want, 
to such a degree, you know, and that's that's a lot about mm. the the hardware that I use and and the sense that I use and and stuff. I I, I mean, <laughs> my space like the, my space echo alone is just like is just awful, but it's like it just sound it adds this just. <laughs> it's just this unpredictability yeah. that never is the same twice and and you know i also got this other piece of gear um called it's behind me it's called the vrs um the vrs 23 and it's this bucket brigade um it's a stereo bucket brigade and uh delay but it but it gets the long really long delay time so i use it a lot as a reverb on the record um because there's just something about bucket brigade delays that i love because they're just filthy and um so yeah, th- that's the gear I like. Definitely not subtle. Like I, I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I have, I have some preamps, you know, like like a- APIs and stuff. And and sure, I mean, I mean, every once in a while we need something to be transparent as possible, you know. But <laughs> not not for not for me for this project. I want I want it to be yeah. you know as as much character as as one could get. Yeah. That must be part of the reason your music resonates with me too, because I, I love it. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, I want I mean, the thing to have a sound, you know. Yeah, like, man. Yeah, digital plugins are great for the clarity and all that stuff. And um, yeah, but when I'm if I'm if I'm going to use a piece of gear, like, come on, give me something. Right, you know? right. But even <laughs> even some even some digital even some digital stuff like Valhalla. It's just, just there's mm. like once you start turning the drive knobs, there's so much character and 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 especially the delay, like the Valhalla delay is like my number one favorite plugin, and it's just it's just because mm. there's so much much character in that delay, and it's just and 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 what's not subtle about that is each mode is just completely a different flavor, which I really appreciate, um, and I feel that way about like there's a couple some plugins in one. Yeah, it's incredible, and it's like fifty bucks. Like, it's just, they, I mean, they could easily charge five hundred dollars for that plugin, and I'd still buy it. Like, it's incredible. <laughs> um, the also, well, on the plugin talk, like um, the the Waves Abbey Road stuff is is incredible. Like, it it, it just like there's there's tons of Waves um, chambers on this record, especially on the drums, um, and um, the TG mastering which I use uh, a lot as a compressor that's on here as well too. And, um, the Kramer tape is on a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I break plugins into those two categories too. Like there's some I have that are just super like clean and surgical and like, you know, when we need to clean up a vocal, that's what we, that's what we pick. But then, you know, um, if we want to get, you know, our, our kick drum sounded gnarly, you know, those are the plugins that are exciting to me. So, but they're both equally yeah. as important in the process, you know? Hmm. Well, that makes a lot of sense then that you're getting some of the sound design work too and film stuff. Um, I, I wanted to kind of pick your brain and just hear a little bit about that too. And I, I love how you look at it as this sort of like, other thing you can do so when yeah you you're working on your snakes of russia stuff you're you're really going hard with that but then you need a break but it's such a great way to take a break in another style of work but that's still within music so that i'm sure um when you come back to doing your music you got some new tricks you have new sounds that you've created new loops and samples yeah. and stuff yeah so, uh, oh. yeah I, I know you've you've done some stuff with spitfire and ableton yeah, yeah, right. that and and um, yeah, I worked on I worked on. There's a library um, uh, for Spitfire called Colossus, and I did. I there's a there's a section of these altered drum kits, and I did those. And then there's a section of synths, and so I did I did those. So it's just kind of like um, it's this really cool library that goes from like small to big or clean to dirty. So like chamber to. Um, uh, orchestra, you know, like chamber size to symphony size. Um, so I, I approached the sound design from that point of view, like very, like here's the sound super small, and then here's the sound, here's the sound mm. super wide. And it's right after I got that Bucket Brigade reverb I talked about, so there's a lot of that on it just yeah. to give it this this huge width. Um, yeah, so so projects like that, and then you know doing some stuff for Ableton, and and there's an incredible company called Infinite Samples that I've done stuff for. Um, that make incredible stuff and um and then for trailer music and and 
and trailer um, libraries and stuff. And it's all fun because it's just like using a different part of my brain. It's still creative. Um, and uh, I, I love it so much. It's, 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 and then my own sample packs too, like, like, um, you know, kind of, kind of yeah, working on, on those. Right? What's that? On we, Gumroad, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You have the, um, the Gumroad store. Yeah. yeah, I have the Gummer Road story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and I love making those and, and people write me all the time and, and, and tell me how much they dig them and, and that they're super inspiring and that's so cool to hear, you know. I just um, – because I really love – I love making that stuff. It's, it's you know, making making samples and loops is like one of my favorite things to do and, and you know, I'm being able to do it for like a few different um, people right now and, and kind of just imparting – what I do, you know, as, as this project and as snakes kind of on their project as a whole is super cool, you know, so it does, it does, it, but it also does help break up, you know, um, you know, sound design days are very different than, than, you know, writing days. Cause it's just, you know, um, it's, it's a, lo a lot of crossover, but, but it's, it's still like, um, it just feels like a different day to me. It's great. You know? Um, mm. so yeah, it's it's been really it's been a lot of fun projects like that and, and and then the scoring work and stuff and then that's also been incredible. So I love I love doing that work too. It's fun, you know, working with you know, uh, I've been I've been helping out a lot of other um composers too doing sound design for for certain things and and um that's fun too because it's again more of a more of the sound design bug. Um and it's it's great. Yeah. That's and your music is so perfect for trailers. I mean, it's it's got that like epic, you know, especially I'm sure like action, science fiction kind of film. Like it it just captures the excitement and drama that I'm sure they're trying to bring forth in a he, short yeah, trailer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's movie. it's yeah, it's um I I I've, I've done a lot. I think since we last talked, I've done I've done quite a bit of of that you know and i love it i love it and one of the reasons i love it one of the very is is because um there's there's um there's these kind of like boundaries you know like there's there's mm -hmm. you know here's this amount of time it, it's always got to feel intense it's got to you know there's some these are some elements that you know again i think i think sometimes boundaries and, and limitations help us and in, especially within the world of trailer music for me um that is just fuel for fire for me. It's it's just like, you know, just just take those guidelines and go, you know? So I love it. Mm -hmm. I love making trailer music. It's so it's so fun. And then and then, you know, getting to kind of impart, you know, some some ideas from, you know, my record tracks onto a, you know, minute and a half trailer queue. Um and have that have that mm -hmm. do well is super cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you have to sort of solve the puzzle in that case, right? You got the certain amount of time, certain hits, certain emotions, certain moments that have to occur, and then you get to yeah. fill in it, fill it in, and yeah. figure it out. Exactly, and probably one of the coolest things I think about trailer music, for me in my experience anyway, um, is the weirder the better. Like it just, it just, it, you can <laughs> almost, almost never be too weird. And and as a create as a creative person, that's incredible, right? To hear, um, you know, it's always oh, you can always be bigger or weirder, you know. So um, I love that as a as a as a guideline, you know. I mean, it's it's kind of like um, in everything I do in that world, I try to have you know like one or two sounds in there that um, someone listens to and like it really stands out, you know. Um, and I find that that's the thing that I usually kind of send it over, over the edge, you know, just, just this, this one or two sound design elements that, that really stand out, you know, um, that's mm. to me in that world is kind of a super important thing. Mm. Yeah. And I guess y you have to sort of keep it to a smaller number, right? Cause if you have eight or nine things that are interesting it's too much to keep track of you don't get to appreciate it and notice the details in it yeah i mean it's it's Where's pretty one? funny because it's it's this it's this pretty funny kind of interesting formula of space for things to breathe but also constantly moving and evolving and like changing every seven seconds and and 
<laughs> finding the middle ground between those two things. And then of course, this all depends on like what the cue is for. If it's if it's if it's obviously a superhero trailer, it's obviously gonna sound and much more different than like um a thriller or or a horror trailer you know it's gonna have th- those are those are different uh, interpretations those are those are different things like one is r- huge soaring brass and and um you know string ostinatos and the other one might be just like super minimalism and you might be able to get really weird with it and that's the beauty within that within that uh, within that um way of expressing yourself uh, you know as someone who writes trailer music is like there's so many different ways you can go and i think that's why i enjoy it and it's such a great kind of break from making snakes records you know where it's like i'm mm-hmm. still using all the same things you know all the same ideas and tools and and uh and it just kind of keeps me uh to just stay fresh and just kind of you know um keep coming up with ideas every day Mm. I I guess I do similar things with my work. I mean, um, I've got a bunch of different ways to scratch the musical itch. I mean, we're doing a podcast right now. It might be making packs and sound designing instruments or yeah, writing you make a songs. Lot of, you have a lot of playing you have a ton of band. packs. Yeah, you have a ton yeah, of packs. Yeah, I, I mean, like I love hundreds, it. Right? I I, I, <laughs> How many yeah, are I, I totally are you to get now? your yeah. How many on the free packs, I've got over 200. I mean, that's incredible, um, man. And then the premium stuff is like, it's catching up. <laughs> you know, it's, wow. I must have like 70 or so. Um, that's so crazy, man. But it's and a discipline you, thing though. Like it's a month, yeah. monthly thing. You know, I try to do get you, that out. Do you set month. aside time to do those? Like, like, do you say like, I want to have one out a month and, and you, you make that your goal? Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I've got people that subscribe to my music production club and like, that's kind of the thing is like, there's a new thing that comes out every month. Um, usually a, some kind of pack and it, it gets you disciplined. You know, it's the same thing. It's like, you have to do that. <laughs> like, well, the accountability, the accountability. Yeah. That's, the accountability. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, another big, yeah. That's another um, and big thing for me is the accountability factor. Yeah, but there's people. Yeah, um, does, that's awesome, man. That's super pressure cool. is good. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. What I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit was, um, you know, sometimes um, doing all those things. I mean, I love each one, so this is why maybe it's a problem. Is sometimes you spread yourself a little thin. Do you find that? Do you have ways of avoiding that so you're not, you know. Um, shortchanging anything or or just hmm. running out of steam or whatever you know it's like because you're doing a lot of different things too and, and yeah. they're big projects and um there's only I mean, so much joseph to I'm, go around right? i'm i'm like i'm i'm traditionally awful at saying no um it was actually my new year's resolution this year to say no more um <laughs> i'm probably failing but um Yes and no, you know, I, I kind of, um, there, there's, there's a, there, there's a lot of things, you know, I've been, I've been making music professionally for this, it will be 10 years next year. And, um, there's a lot of things that I did in the beginning, um, that like, I'm not so keen on doing now. And, and only for the reason that it takes me away from the stuff I really want to do, which is everything that we've been talking about is stuff I always want to do and continue doing, you know, until I can. Um, so if there's something that comes along, I think I just, I just, I just take a pause and think about like, okay, like, you know, how, how, how long is this, is this, how long is this going to take? How, how much, how much energy is this going to take both physical and mental? Um, and 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 I like to say like, am I gonna have fun? Is it, is it gonna be like? Is it gonna is it gonna be? Am I gonna enjoy the process? Am I gonna learn something by doing this? You know, um, I I I'm in the middle of doing a project. Um, uh, it's it's it might it might even I I don't know if it'll be out by the time we, this is released, but um, but it's there there was I needed to work in in a. Um, 
a DAW that I don't usually work in, but um, and mm. which I, which is like tying my hands behind my back to use it. But I I, I looked I looked at it like if I'm if I'm going to learn something new from the experience, then that is a plus. Like that's a reason for me to do it um, because just just like being something being lucrative these days is like that's not. That's not the be all end all to me. Like it's it's like is it going to be fun? Am I going to have? Am I do I enjoy working with these people? Is it is it, you know, is it something I'm going to feel really great about when it's done? So I think even even before that, there's a lot of questions that I that I ask myself, and then. You know, from there, the other thing is, is that like I'm really good with time management and I budget my time really well and I compartmentalize my days and, and, um, you know, I work fast. So, um, and that's just by doing it for so long, right? That I've been able to just kind of like, you know, I, I, if I need to get from A to B, like that's my skill. You know, other people are like incredible guitar players or, or, you know, sick drummers. I can just get from point A to point B. If 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 you if you want something that sounds like this, I can get us here. Like you know, or the other way around. Like if you just know what you want it, if you give me a reference, and you know, so like having that skill set and having that be probably like my strongest um, skill, um, that really helps get things done really fast. So I, I think that you know, both the combination of being really selective these days about what I do, and then and then really taking the time to to um, budget my time taking the time to budget my time or plan my week out and 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 really kind of like you know say you know this is the most important thing and it's going to take the most energy the most creative energy so i'm going to do this first thing and then i get that done and then and then the afternoon is about is about stuff that's that's a little lighter you know if i need to organize stuff or rename stuff or like or like you know chop samples or or you know anything like that like that is stuff that's like a little less creative and more um you know administrative and, I, and i'm able to do that you know so it's all about just being a little bit smarter about about where the energy goes you know and um yeah. And somehow, like I mentioned before, like my day is sh- shorter than it's ever been, you know, just with a family. And mm-hmm. yet I get more done. Like I, I do, it's the time is so focused and it's just like I come in here, I work and I get out of here. So um, and, you know, I, I yeah. So I hope that answered your question. I know it was a very long form way of oh, yeah. answering that. But yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Of course, like, you know, the limited time thing forces you to really value yeah. it right things that are in limited supply we value more so you don't waste it as much um the idea of uh kind of I, I do a lot of the same things you do actually with the trying to decide like if i'm going to learn something if it's going to ha- have something else to it that brings value yeah. and i like to ask myself the question do i will i might say like yeah that sounds cool but would i do it tomorrow like when it's actually that's great. <laughs> you know that's the next it. thing on the schedule. No, that's if it's perfect. no, then it's like then it's, then no. it's not gonna be yes in three months or a week or I something. love that. I love that. That's perfect, um, man. Yeah. Yeah, it helps a lot. It, it, it does. It's made me make some it does. Smart I usually say I usually say, and, Would I do that on Friday? Like you take it one level, you're like, Well, I do it tomorrow. That's like that's really um no, but I love that. I've done that before. And and if the answer is no and it's just like, ah, well, I guess then, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, it's great. I'm still extremely flattered anyone that wants anything to do with me, right? So Dude, my I tendency is to want to say yes. Yeah, I, same way. So, I'm the same. Yeah, I'm the same. But I'm there just, are I'm, certain yeah. things that um, just aren't part of the vision. I think that helped a lot is having a, a clearer vision of what I want to do. Yeah. And um, yeah. there's just certain things that I'm just not, I just don't want to do as much yeah and exactly that and that changes time, like that changes focus. all the time that's like the things that yeah, i true. am excited about doing um well the things the things that like uh you know i'm not so excited about doing have 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 evolved and changed you know and 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 also mm-hmm. like you know you know i'm i'm, I'm it's also like, you know, there's there's probably other people that would be way more excited about doing that thing because that's kind of their thing, you know, like, um, you know, yeah. like vocal production. Like I, I like like I have some friends that are just like they're just the best vocal producers in the world. Like that's what they do. So, you know, I'm happy like us like go to him. He, he'll do such a, a better job, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. So I, I think being able to be honest with, about that 
and 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 say like mm. you know this is my skill set this is what i do really well this is what i love to do is so important mm. yeah and it, i found it helps too to have somebody to turn people to if it's something oh yeah i don't really want yeah. to do anymore but but this person you know she's great yeah. he's great that they that's what they like to do um yeah then yeah. it, it, I feel a little less. Uh, maybe it's like a people pleaser thing, you know. That, you're off. <laughs> that yeah. No, can, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. But then also, like, you, you know, right you're direction. helping your friend out. Like, it's uh, you know, throwing them, throwing yeah, them. You know, yeah. some work is awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. Let me ask you quickly. I, I know we're probably getting kind of near the end, um, but I apologize. I like talking to you. Oh, please, uh, man. It's I'm a, curious been great, about it. Yeah, what's what's the live show look like? How does that come about? Because you've got, I mean, you can't be like reamping stuff in the right venues so um, much, I'm sure. Um, so how do you perform? Yeah, what does that look like? I I'm trying to think the timeline of when we last talked and I and I and I played um, my first gig. Uh, I think it was about nine months after we had talked for the first time. I think I think and. It, it 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 was just um it was just my my modular synth case and um at that time it was it was an octatrack just so my octatrack and an, a modular synth case and this was at um this was in the like the down tempo room at this at this um at this rave here in L A and it was great because it was so loud it was the, the loudest shows I've ever played so. I come from bands. I come from being a front man. I come from, you know, the energy of a band behind me. But that in that in that 30 minutes was completely replaced by just how the sheer volume of that performance and just how loud it was. So the, so like that became the thing of like, you know, just the subs and just how how loud it was. So since then, um, the, the performance has like it's evolved. It's, you know, I went from um, using the Octatrack to um switching over to, to Ableton because um, I'm an Ableton user through and through for production in the studio, but now using it as a live tool too. So I have the push and I have um, Ableton um, on the laptop and then I still have the modular case, but then I started to integrate like a light show, a little bit of a, a light show. And then most recently um, a projector visual. So with that, I need to have the Ableton session. So it, it basically, um, that's the that's the gig and that could fly kind of anywhere it all fits in like three three um three uh, cases so um that that was the show it has been the show for like the last at least year and um but about uh, in so in, in april of of this year i released a video called uh, for a single called dose thrones and in that video there, there's two drummers playing along with me and that's kind of like my, I mean, if I could scale this the way I want to in, in, you know, my, my, you know, my crazy dreams, um, it would, it would be a band. It would be a full band, you know, just, just me and, you know, two drummers and, and, and maybe just a, a bass player and a synth, you know, maybe that plays uh, synth too. So that is, is, w was always the idea of how this would scale to, right. But obviously for right now, it's, it's, it's it's very sustainable for me just to play by myself, you know, because I could fly that. It's very, you know, I have a tour coming up in October where I'm literally just jumping in the vehicle with those guys and 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 off we go. So it's very. I understand that it's easy to do but because the it is just me. No, no, it's just me. So oh, okay. so it's very easy okay. to do. These right guys now. meaning just, the cases. <laughs> no, these guys mean the other band. Like, like there's room in the vehicle with, oh, okay, with gotcha, the other gotcha. band. So they're like, yeah, just gotcha. hop in with us, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. so it, nice. it That's a good I understand thing that. Because, what's that? What's that? <laughs> That's just a good uh, thing to be able to do is to get the right live, exactly the van, whatever. Right? Yeah, right. So that's why yeah. it's so sustainable, and I'm hesitant to <laughs> to add more members. Um, for now, right? But the second I, I, you know, I'm I'm doing a release show here in LA, which I'm which I'm actually playing with um, two other people. So, you know, I'm kind of treating it as like a case by case thing. You know, if there's a big enough show and I can afford to bring out um, a band, I will. 
but for now, man, it's just it's just yeah, it's just me, the modular case, um, Ableton, some lights, and a projector playing the visuals in the back of me. I'm having a ball. I love it. Like I didn't, you know, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. Again, coming from bands, I didn't think I'd have half as much fun doing the shows, but I am. I'm having a blast. I love it. It connects with people, I think. And um, yeah, it's been super fun. I'm excited for these shows and this tour so much, especially getting the new stuff out there and playing the new stuff. Because again, it was, you know, a lot of that writing was informed by the live show. And like, I, I want to make stuff that just sounds massive in a room. And then also when I add drummers, it'll just sound even bigger, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I come from bands too, and I got really excited about the fact that you can take electronic music productions yeah. or whatever you want to call it. I guess mm -hmm. um, you can you can do it live now, and it's yeah. so fun that yeah, it, it translates. It's exciting. There's energy. Yeah, and I've I've always blows my mind. Um, even like I kind of work at a session view, and I've. Mm -hmm effects on my vocals and things like that um but the recorded parts are always exactly the same yeah but every show is different yeah and i can arrange it i can arrange things different do different effects but it's just wild that it's like having band members that are playing the same thing but it comes out different every time yeah there's, there's a lot of life to these performances now yeah do. it's so cool Ag agreed and it's always for me. It's always evolving. It's always changing. My my, my live set session is always changing, um, and it's like I'm at this constant crossroads of like making it like I, I making it dangerous enough that that something could go wrong to keep like the <laughs> to keep it interesting. Um, yeah. So the, I leave a little bit of it up to up to you know like be it arrangement or triggering loops on top but not have those be quantized or or you know or just playing stuff in or you know like my modular patch so it's like this crossroad of like of like you know because ultimately like this show must go on right and i need to have it i need to have it like steady and constant and, and which is one of the reasons why i moved back over to ableton for the live show anyway because i felt like it was it was a little bit more um uh sturdier so yeah it's this battle between that and it's like how, how much how much do i want to put in the hands of fate or or you know um you know and then especially adding adding you know some some other members and stuff like you know it's gonna it's just gonna it's gonna move a little bit more you know especially with a live drummer yeah. even though you know they're triggering um the samples from within the session it's still gonna you know kind of move a little bit which is going to be super mm -hmm. fun yeah yeah that it's a little variety a little yeah. sway a little danger too <laughs> that's really cool yeah yeah that's part of you know i i want to see a show that has like some danger um when i go to a show and it's just like going to be exactly the same thing that's guaranteed it, it's a little bit of the fun that's lost but when it's you know stuff can happen just like when you see a band, yeah you know things uh, weird things yeah. happen and right uh, that's that's cool yeah and i think i really. think even before even right that's that's a great word yeah i mean even before that i think like the live arrangements for me are, are i make them all different like on purpose so i want there to be some variation mm -hmm. you know so i think a lot with playing the live show it's all about front loading right and just doing most of the work beforehand to have this set that we can mess with live and 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 you're right it's never the same yeah. twice because there's always just different you know but having a lot of stuff to, to to play with and to bring in and out and stuff and and um but having having putting in the work and, and setting that up i think is an important part of it and it and it keeps it interesting for sure yeah you're basically building your instrument and then learning how to play it yeah yeah it's, totally yeah you, you, a lot of that yeah a lot of that has to happen beforehand. You got to really know it inside and out. Yeah, and, uh, I have a lot of fun I think making maybe before. What's yeah, that? Go ahead. I I, I said you I said have a lot of fun lot of making. Fun. Yeah, I have a lot of fun making the um, like the live arrangements or interpretations, you know, of certain songs, mm -hmm. like kind of live mixes and live edits that are different than the records, you know, so that people, you know, 
have a different like exactly what you're saying it's like it's not the same thing it's not the it's not just the the track you know what i mean maybe songs bleed into each other that are in the mm-hmm. same key and and stuff yeah i just like to and plus it's 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 more fun for me you know like how can i expect anyone else to have a good time if i'm not having a good time you know so yeah yeah it's fun yeah in those situations you're you're like in charge of the energy for the whole place so you have yeah. to be enthusiastic right. like, it's a lot of pressure because <laughs> whatever you're feeling is contagious and yeah. if it's if you're excited that's great if you're like bored then good luck yeah it really translates that. it does it translates yeah hmm. for sure so this has been great man uh so good to catch yeah. up with you um Friday, Absolutely, October the 13th, Friday the 13th. So appropriate. <laughs> and I love yeah, that you got yeah. that date. True yeah. Surrender. I guess it'll be on all the streaming services. Yeah. I'm working with a label that, right? um, this time. Yeah, I'm working with a label called Modular Field from Cologne, Germany. Um, mm-hmm. Incredible people, incredible label. Um, yeah, it was their, their suggestion to do it on Friday the 13th. And I'm like, well, I guess we yeah. should. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so it'll be on all the streaming <laughs> services. There's going to be, there's a vinyl edition that's available for pre order. And um, yeah, all the things, man, for sure. Hmm. Yeah, exciting times for you. I'm really happy for you. Congratulations on the, the release. It really is awesome. I mean, Thanks, I don't man. know anything I really that appreciate like it. that. And it's very entertaining on a lot of different levels. You can go at it sound design, just song structure, just as a whole, as an album that just sets a vibe. Um, there's a lot a lot of ways you, in for this album. And yeah, I think you did a great job. And um, thanks, I'm excited man. to listen to it again after hearing some of the backstory right. from you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. I'm really proud of it. And I, I just hope that people connect with it, you know? And um, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Very cool. cool so man. where can we send people to find out more about Snakes of Russia? And I mean, snakesofrussia.com. What do you like? Snakesofrussia.com. Just mm-hmm. goes to um, just goes to my uh, website, which usually has links to everything. Um, um, I'm on Instagram as well. I'm pretty active over there. Um, my YouTube channel. Um, I post more and more to these days. But I would say snakesofrussia.com is is just kind of the, the hub, and then that branches off if you're yeah. if you're um, you know want to get some some other records or t-shirts or something like that that'll go to my uh band camp and then and then it's that goes also to my gum road to if you're, you want to get uh some of the sample packs so yeah i would say snakes is the is the place yeah. very cool yeah well i gotta thank you very much for being here um appreciate you Dude, taking thank, the time yeah. to catch up thank um, you i appreciate you having me it was, it was great yeah um, it was great to come back on you're you're a cool dude, man. Um, you you have a lot of darkness in your music, but your personality <laughs> is like all sunshine. So. I would. I mean, <laughs> nobody just... would want to hang if I if I was. Yeah, no one would want to hang out with me. <laughs> talk to me if i was that you know morose all the time but thank you yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that's it. like the escape right that's the outlet <laughs> it is 100 yeah, so 100 100 yeah healthy yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah everybody yeah. um check out joseph's work snake of snakes of russia.com and i'll put all this stuff in the show notes we had a lot of things we touched upon that i'll also put links to and thank you for listening Thank you for listening to the Music Production Podcast. If you want to help support the show, the best thing you can do is tell a friend, someone you think that would enjoy the show. I'd also love it if you could leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to support my work, you can go to brianfunk.com. I've got tons of Ableton Live packs, tutorials, samples. You can check out my book, The 5-Minute Music Producer, which gives you 365 short music-making activities to help you get started, stay inspired, and finish more music. And there's also the Music Production Club, where you get my latest releases as soon as they're finished. It gives you access to a community of like-minded people who are making music and sharing ideas. You can share your music, find new collaborators, and participate in our live meetings where we set up some kind of musical challenge and then make music together and share our results at the end. That's the Music Production Club. It's a lot of fun, and you can find that and everything that I do at brianfunk.com. Thanks again for listening to the show, and have a great day.